Uh, the joy that he's offering these, the, his disciples, his joy, is not based on fortunate circumstances. Because he tells them that they're going to have hardships and the world's going to hate them. And they know that they're going to be out there in a hostile environment preaching this gospel and they could face persecution and rejection and martyrdom as actually happened to 11 out of the 12 uh, first apostles. Uh, and yet that joy is given to them. So it's a joy that's not based on circumstances. It's also clearly a joy that's not incompatible with having sorrow and grief. Jesus tells them that they're going to have sorrow and grief two chapters later. And yet the joy he's talking about is something that is deeper than sorrow and grief. It's, it's a pervasive sense of well-being that, that comes from one thing and one thing only. And that is uh, you're abiding in the love of God. The love of God defines you. You understand that you're loved by God and are filled with, with, with that love, and you're overflowing with that love towards others. Uh, it's, it's knowing that this love that, is, that you have from the Father through Christ, is, is, it's not a wavering kind of love. It's not a circumstantial kind of love. It's not a conditional kind of love. It's not a temporary kind of love. It's the love of the eternal God who has no beginning and has no end and in whom there's no shadow of turning. Uh, to know that love means that you, you understand that this goes on forever. This is the always victorious love of God. It cannot be quenched. Can it be destroyed? It's, it's the love we sang about earlier, the love of the lion and the lamb. The love that's manifested on Calvary, to abide in that love, to live in that love, to let that love define you, that is synonymous with having eternal life. You know that nothing can end this. It's, it's a love that is stronger than death, stronger than sin, it's stronger than condemnation, stronger than any kind of judgment, stronger than in any hardships we might go through, it's stronger than the devil himself. It, it, it's, it's, it's greater than any circumstances. It's a kind of joy, this pervasive sense of well-being that you can't get from having fortunate circumstances, so you can't lose by having unfortunate circumstances. Having fortunate circumstances can make you happy as long as those circumstances are going well, but they can't give you joy. The one thing that can give us joy is abiding in the always victorious love of God, being filled with that love. And that's the joy that Jesus has and the joy that he gives disciples as we abide in that love and to know that it goes on forever and ever and ever. This is why one of the most celebratory passages in the entire New Testament is Romans 8, starting with verse, uh, I think it's 39, 35, and it goes to 39. Paul says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? And he's asking a rhetorical question there. The answer is no, they can't do it. As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. So those things can happen. But here's the good news. Knowing all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor, th the, nor the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. That, folks, is good news. Now, I sometimes hear preachers talk about we're more than conquerors, and they, 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 they take it to mean that we're not going to have to go through any of these things, that we're above these things. But see, Paul assumes that all the things he mentions in this passage are things that can happen to us. We live in a fallen world that is spiritually oppressed, and in this world, you may have hardships, you will have trouble, you can go through persecution. Sometimes people find themselves without food, they're in a famine. Sometimes they find themselves homeless and they are naked. Sometimes people find themselves being put to the sword and they're slaughtered like sheep all day long. That can happen in this fallen world. And, and the powers that he talks about, the demonic powers, they can hassle you, and, and nasty people can hassle you, and diseases can hassle you, and, uh, you know, nasty, terrible things can happen in this world, and you are, if the Lord doesn't come back, it's certain that you're going to die. Sorry, you're not getting around that. You, there's no avoiding that. To be more than a conqueror doesn't mean that we, have a, we escape those things. That's not the good news. The good news is that while we may go through those things, nothing but nothing but nothing but nothing, did I say nothing? Nothing can separate us from the love of God that's found in Christ Jesus. Jesus.